This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our devotion time today on this Thursday morning, June 4th. We're glad that you're with us. Let's begin our devotion, our time together in God's word with Luther's morning prayer. We pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. He was standing right there at the edge of the pool, only two years old, always a little nervous about getting into the water. He didn't feel quite comfortable with it, but this time was a little different as he stood on the edge of the pool. Just inside the water, about waist deep, was his dad holding out his arms, asking him to jump. Remember, he was always nervous about jumping into the water before, but this time he jumped. Why did he jump? He knew. He had faith. He was confident. Confident, not with a blind faith, but with a certainty, knowing that the one he trusted would catch him. With that little picture in mind, I invite you to listen to one brief verse from the book of Hebrews, from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. If that little two-year-old was already in the arms of his father, it would not have taken faith, would it? He was already there. He was being held. He could feel the touch. He could see that he was being held. Faith would not have been involved. But the fact that he jumped and was not yet there, but knew with absolute certainty that he would be caught, that he would be safe, that he would be cared for, that he would be loved, that's faith. And that's what the Lord is talking about here through the writer to the Hebrews. You see, contrary to what many people think, faith is not mere wishful thinking. Faith is not a blind hope, just wishing and wondering for things to work out and hoping beyond hope that they will. Faith is total certainty. Faith is a gift that although the eyes cannot see it, the hands cannot feel it at the moment, although the senses are not touched right now, there is a certainty. Because you see, faith rests upon what God says. Faith rests not upon what we think about it or what our experience tells us, because after all, our thoughts and our experiences are certainly flawed. And one thing that we all have in common is that everyone makes mistakes and errs at times. No, faith is absolute certainty because it looks to the one who knows all things, who can do all things, and who has already accomplished what is completely impossible for us. But because he accomplished it, he has made it a reality. Think of the comfort you and I have in this certainty. In these times when we experience uncertainties on many, many levels, and we could spend a lot of time right now talking about all the uncertainties that we experience in life. What matters most? How we got here? Why we are here? Where we will be for all eternity? and how we know for certain where we will be for all eternity, there's no doubt, no questions. 
No struggle in trying to find the answers because the answers are given to us by our eternal almighty Lord God and they shine out in the cross where your sin, my sin, the sin of the entire world was carried by him and removed forever. This coming Sunday in our worship services, we are observing what is called the Sunday of the Holy Trinity. On this Sunday, we are reminded of what God's Word teaches about our God, that He is beyond our understanding. We can't figure Him out, and yet He makes Himself known. The true God is one. He cannot be divided. He is indivisible, the Bible teaches. He is one. And yet, the Bible tells us that our one indivisible God is yet three separate, distinct, and unique persons of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What a mystery that is beyond us. But isn't there comfort in that, that we can't understand everything about him? Because if we could, would he really be any better than we are? He's beyond us. And that means what we need, what we cannot achieve by ourselves, he can, he did, and he gives it to us. Our triune God has secured our eternal redemption. Our triune God, our Father, sent his own dear Son, his only begotten Son from eternity, who took the burden of our sin when he became one of us and died for us to save us. And we know we have been saved because Jesus lives. How do we know this? How did we come to this faith? Because God, the Holy Spirit, working through the gospel, the gospel in word and sacrament has come to us in a very real way and opened up our eyes so that we who are dead now live, we who are blind now see. That's what faith is. Seeing what we need to see, knowing what we need to know, knowing with certainty that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and in faith, having that salvation, that wonderful peace of the forgiveness of sins, which is yours through faith in him. As he stood there at the edge of the pool, he would not have jumped had his father not been there. But holding out his arms, looking into his eyes, the little two-year-old knew for certain that although he was not yet there, he would be there because he knew that his dad would catch him. That's faith. We're not yet there, but we know. We know that the guilt of sin is gone in the blood of Jesus. We know that life is eternal in the resurrection of Jesus. Faith is being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see. Let's pray. Most gracious and loving triune God, we praise you, Heavenly Father, for loving the entire world, everyone in the world so much that you sent your own Son into the world to be our Savior. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, for taking on human flesh, for going to the cross as you bore the sin of the world and washing away the sin of the world. In you there is now no more condemnation, only eternal peace and life. We praise you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for coming to us in love and warming our hearts as you brought us to faith in Jesus our Savior. Now, Holy Spirit, continually come to us through your word and strengthen us in the peace of sins forgiven, in the comfort of faith as you draw us closer to you. Watch over us, triune God, every day, our physical needs, most of all our spiritual needs, and strengthen us in faith that we might live each day in the confidence of being your children. We pray this in our Savior's name. Amen. 
Again, thank you for joining us this morning, this Thursday morning. We do have a number of announcements. We are having person-to-person -person worship this week. Thursday evening, tonight at 7 o'clock is worship. Sunday, 8 and 10.30, please join us. We are observing certain guidelines to retain social distancing. It's so that we can be as safe as possible, but it is a happy time, a joyful time to gather in God's house with fellow Christians. So we hope that you are able to join us. Bible study will be at 9.20. That will go till about 10 a.m. on Sunday. Also with our live stream devotion schedule, the last couple months we have been having devotion and updates on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Starting next week, this devotion and update on our ministry will be only on Tuesday mornings. Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m., also, we have good news. Elizabeth Hagedorn, the teacher that we had called to be our third and fourth grade teacher here at Christ St. John's Lutheran School, has accepted that call. The Lord has led her to this decision to come here to Christ St. John's to be our third and fourth grade teacher. So I'd like to take a few moments to read her acceptance letter for you. Dear members of Christ and St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Churches, Praise be to our risen and ascended Lord and Savior, who has given us the awesome privilege of serving him together as his kingdom of believers. It is a blessing to receive a call to teach God's precious lambs and to share his word with them. I would like to thank you for your prayers over the past couple of weeks as I have deliberated where I would best be able to serve our Lord. After much prayerful consideration, the Lord has led me to accept the call to teach third and fourth grades at Christ St. John's Evangelical Lutheran School. I pray that our work together in the Lord's kingdom be blessed at Christ St. John's. In his grace, Elizabeth Hagedorn. Praise God for this. A couple months ago, we were looking at three vacancies at Christ St. John's going into this upcoming school year starting in September. And now by the grace of God and wisdom of God, all three of those vacancies are now filled. We have a new pre-K teacher, a new first and second grade teacher, and now a new third and fourth grade teacher. So we can look forward to a new school year at Christ St. John's starting in September, Lord willing. And most of all, we can look forward to taking his precious truths that are such a blessing to the next generation. Please continue to remember our congregation, our school, all of our families in your prayers. Please also check out our website for our church calendar and any updates that we might have. We are going to be having various Bible studies throughout the month of June, and that is all right there in the church calendar, opportunities to grow together in God's Word. May the Lord bless you and keep you in His care and enrich you in the joy and love that comes only from him. Let's close our devotion today with the Lord's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.